Holy <laughs> You got an iguana above you. You got an iguana. Let's play a game. If I could only live in three cities in the entire United States, where would I start building a social circle? Where would I start networking? I got inspired by nomad capitalists who talked about the three countries he would live in for the rest of his life if he had absolutely no other choice. And I thought this would be super interesting because I wanted to list out my top three cities that I've learned from my personal experience coaching over 175 clients of building their social circles around the world and kind of what are the pros and cons of each of these top three cities. So this might be surprising to you, so let's hop right into it. My name is Patrick Red. I have eight employees here in Medellin, Colombia, and we help professionals build happy social circles of high net worth individuals and kind of build the lifestyle that they thought just earning more money would actually bring them. And over the past years, I've had clients all around the US. I particularly enjoy working with clients in the US because that's what I know the best. And a lot of my clients, they're either in New York City or they're in Miami or they're in Washington DC, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, or even in Texas. And I've been to a lot of these places and I've kind of had a really good feel of what each social circle opportunities there are in each city. So I thought it'd be kind of a fun little exercise to kind of explain to you what I think my top three cities would be if I was starting to build a social circle from scratch in the United States right now and I had no other opportunities to live anywhere else at all. Now, I personally grew up in Maryland and I grew up in a cornfield and there weren't a ton of people around me. And so I default started to build one in Washington, D.C., but I didn't particularly enjoy Washington, D.C. because although it was an amazing money city, it didn't just quite have the type of women that I wanted to date, didn't have the type of guys or the type of environment that I wanted to be around either. Also, I used to live in a really nice penthouse in Las Vegas as well. And I also realized that Las Vegas is cool to go live there for a little bit, but I just didn't resonate with that like party all the time lifestyle that Las Vegas offered either. So these are kind of pulling from my personal experiences of what I liked and the pros and cons of different cities. And also keep in mind, it also depends on what type of year because I have an apartment over in Washington, DC. And then I also live in Medellin, Colombia part-time as well. So it's kind of keeping in mind that different places are d better at different times of the year as well. So the first and number one city that I would pick is Miami, Florida. And let me kind of tell you a little bit why. It's not exactly because of like the nice weather. It's not exactly because you have amazing nightclubs, but Miami is starting to become this amazing lifestyle city where you have amazing weather, you have amazing beaches, and you have the ability to, you know, meet very cool people from all the around the world that like to travel to Miami especially during this last 2020. Miami's had amazing open regulation laws, being able to go meet people. And it also has a very eclectic mix of people all around the world. And even like last week, SoFi Bank committed to putting $100 million into startups in Miami as well. So whether you're there for business or you're there for your social life, it's kind of the best of both worlds because Miami is not super expensive to go live in. You can get an apartment in downtown Brickell pretty cheap, maybe $2,000, $3,000 a month. Then if you split it, maybe $1,500 a month. And also it has amazing opportunities to meet very high net worth individuals. I mean, you can literally just go up to a dock, go talk to somebody who has a yacht, become friends with them, and then end up bringing girls or bringing other cool high status guys, connecting with that yacht owner and, you know, also being able to get access to those free yachts as well. When I was teaching a boot camp down in Miami with one of my friends, I met this yacht owner and he's like, oh yeah, hey, if you ever come back to Miami, you know, just bring some girls and we'll bring you out onto the yacht. And he showed me like all these crazy parties he was doing and stuff like that. So Miami is just an amazing spot because people are a lot more lifestyle focused. It's not like a city like Washington DC where people are just focused on money and you have to commute two hours to DC and you know, people are very uh, angry about a lot of things. They're always caught up in what are the semantics of politics? And it's just a lot more refreshing of an environment to be in. You know, minus the very torching hot summers. Miami is my favorite in March when you have like EDC and then also in December when you have Art Basel. As another bonus, if you're not just looking for like high status nightclubs and you know, be able to get bottle service tables, Miami also hosts the Super Bowl. It also hosts amazing events. And whether you're going to like a nice art gallery in Wynwood or you're going to some type of model photo shoot, uh, Miami has a lot of access to amazing places paired with amazing lifestyle. Now, the second favorite city that I would choose to live in would be New York City. Not only because of its amazing opportunities to people, but because logistics and being around cool people all the time is just one of the center hubs of New York City. New York City has an amazing high density population, which means that 
just walking along the street, you're kind of destined on your day-to-day -day life just to meet new people. I know one of my best friends who lived in New York City and he would just casually like be peeing in the urinal next to Shia LaBeouf or uh, see some famous movie actor walking down the street. And it was a constant spot where he was in the space constantly around really cool people. And you could take advantage of those opportunities if you're able to actually recognize those people, you know, start a quick, friendly conversation and actually become friends with some very high status people as well. Another great thing about New York City is that it's a very awesome money city. People enjoy making money, people enjoy business networking. It's kind of like the, uh, the Apprentice. You could have like the one half of it where it's like the Apprentice, Donald Trump, like everybody is like cutthroat and Wall Street type vibes. Or you could have like a very friendly conversation with somebody who's also doing probably the same thing in your same city. So no matter what social circle you're trying to build in New York City, chances are there's somebody else who lives there, is already doing it, and is already successful at it. And in that case, all you have to do is find them and figure out how to connect with them whether that's at an event like New York City Fashion Week. Prince Street is one of my favorite spots to go meet models if you're just into cold approach and you just wanna go meet people on the streets or you know Washington Square Park or even you know on Columbia campus or right outside NYU over in Washington Square Park like I just mentioned. Every single second, even if you were just doing cold approach in New York City, every single time you turn your head, you just see another 10 walk by and in that case, you never really have to worry about messing up or burning down a social circle because there's just so many people that you can go and start new opportunities with. That's even amazing because then you can leverage that cold approach to start going to cool high status events, especially with everything that's been shut down the last year. All the high status networking events have only had super high status guys and awesomely hot girls because all the promoters are going to these casual events and it's been amazing to connect with them. For example, I actually went to one of these parties over in New Year's Eve with one of my clients and it was pretty awesome because every single person there was either a promoter at a nightclub or had amazing access to other cool high status people because they've been bored for the last year or so. So New York City has a very plethora of different social circles. You're never gonna run out of people to actually go meet in a city like New York City. If you're really looking to make more money and stop being left behind from other people who are making higher incomes than you, you're never gonna be in a situation where the reason why you don't have a social circle is because those people don't exist or because they're not going out, because they're just simply so many people. And all you really have to learn at that point is simple, fundamental, high status communication skills of how to keep these people in your life long term, how to actually become friends with them long term and extend those relationships and how to get them more interested in you and bringing the, you along into their social circles. Now, the third city, I know I said it, there's a lot of downsides about it. Obviously, Las Vegas. Now, the reason why I'm hesitant to say Las Vegas in here is because it's kind of like the siren song in terms of building your social circle, right? People, they live in small towns or they live in big cities and they're like, okay, yeah, if I wanna go build a social circle, I have to go move to Las Vegas. And in doing so, they kind of ignore all the opportunities they have in their existing cities because they think that, oh yeah, Las Vegas is an amazing party city. It's the spot that you have to build a social circle. And granted, it is, but Las Vegas also lacks a lot of things. It lacks being able to go outdoors in terms of having amazing greenery. It's a very much a party vibe and that every single person there is more likely than not going to be more drug focused or more alcohol focused. And if your social circle is just around nightlife, what well, ends up kind of making you one dimensional as well. Las Vegas is amazing for living there for like five to six months maybe. Las Vegas doesn't have as long-term relationships. People are constantly going into the city, out of the city, but you can meet amazing high quality people. Let me give you a great example. There's a common theme where startup founders, when they get funding from San Francisco, they go to Las Vegas and they spend $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 on bottle service tables, whether that's at Omnia on a Tuesday night or at Lavo Brunch on Sundays. And in those environments, you can go walk up to somebody who in San Francisco would be pretty much untouchable in terms of being able to actually get a meeting with them or even have a face-to-face -face conversation with them. But when you're in Las Vegas, you know, they don't know how to meet girls. They don't know what the cool hip thing to do on a, a Sunday or a Saturday night is. And as you, as being a Las Vegas local, you can just tell them or point them to the right club or get them on a guest list or just point them to the right place or bring two or three girls over to the table, even if you just met them inside the nightclub. And in that case, they're your best friend. They come back to Las Vegas and they hit you up the next time that they're there. And it becomes amazing because just having a basic level of knowledge of what to do and what are the cool things to do in Las Vegas already sets you so far ahead of the pack even if you are a guy who doesn't have a lot of money or doesn't have a successful business already because they envy you in the same way that you envy them. They envy your ability to live in Las Vegas, party, 
you know, meet amazing women, but you envy their ability to make a successful business. So it ends up being something that their lack of women and your ability to provide women end up creating an amazing relationship. And this is why promoting in Las Vegas is one of the best ways to start out. If you're only like 21 to 22 years old and you have no idea at all what to do with your life or what direction to even take that in. So these are my top three favorite cities. Let me know if I missed anything down below. I'm specifically just talking about United States cities and in future videos, I'll do one about kind of more worldly topics of what are the worst five cities to actually build your social circle in. And obviously you can build a social circle even if you're in a small town or a big city. It really doesn't matter because it's more about taking the opportunities and being authentic and aligning your core goals of what you want to accomplish out of life with the people that you're actually connecting with. So if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe if you really wanna see these future videos and you don't wanna miss it out. YouTube likes to take these things down and I will talk to you very soon.